Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Alice, and I'm doing a video entitled All That I've Learned by 28. Now I'm going to talk about mentors. Very few people actually have mentors. As you go through your networking efforts, as you just meet people, always be on the lookout for potential mentors. You'll find that a commonality among really successful achievers is that at some time or another, each of them had a mentor who was essential in their success, who helped them achieve much more than they thought or even knew was possible. Mentorship is absolutely critical to living the life you want. And who mentors you, just like who your friends are and who you hang out with, often has a huge effect on who you become. Which person mentors you determines which networks you're able to get into and able to access and even find out about in some times. And who mentors you often impacts where you go in your life. And so just like we said earlier during the video on work and finding a company that you're passionate about, people spend 16 years in school and often just a few weeks blasting out resumes trying to get a job. What further amazes me is people will spend 16 years or more in school and zero weeks trying to find a mentor. So why do people spend 832 weeks in school and no time seeking amazing mentors? Maybe they'll have a mentor, but it'll just sort of be the guy that they met in class, that came in to speak. It's not someone you really sought out, who you really thought would be the perfect person to help you achieve what you want to achieve. And oftentimes the reason people don't seek out mentors is because they don't know what they want to achieve. They haven't written down their goals. They haven't created their vision board. They haven't created a bucket list. And if you don't know what you want to achieve, you're going to achieve very little. And you're certainly not going to proactively and purposefully seek out the people and advisors and mentors that you need to help you get there. Oftentimes, though, growing up in middle America, growing up in the suburbs like I did, it's difficult to identify and find high integrity, amazing, caring, competent, smart mentors. So how do you find these high integrity, amazing mentors? Well, I have a few tips on that from my own experience. First, go to the internet. Go to Google and look for people who are at organizations that have missions that you're passionate about. And see if you can find, using this internet, people that are brilliant, that are competent, people that are high integrity, and people that are 15 to 20 years ahead of you. And all you have to do is create what's called a pipeline. And a pipeline is simply an Excel spreadsheet or just a list of potential prospects to become your potential mentors, people you've identified as maybes. And once you identify these 20 potential mentors through your internet searching and through your existing networks and people that you might know that might know others, your job is to convince two of them just two great, amazing mentors that you are worth them investing time into. Oftentimes, adults or really successful people would love to help out more young people. The problem we run into is that we don't know which people need our help the most. We don't know who is the most motivated to actually achieve something that aligns with our life missions. And if I found a young, really smart, person who, was, who persevered, who worked hard, who kept after me and really tried to get advice from me, I will absolutely give them advice. But it takes more than just an email or a tweet or one message. It takes persistence over weeks, sometimes months, to really get into the network of someone who can really help you out. The best way to find people that are really busy is to get introduced to them by someone who is one of their trusted connections. Now, people have different numbers of trusted connections. What I find is that some people have five trusted connections, some people have a couple hundred trusted connections. But the key to getting a meeting, the key to getting to take your prospective mentor to lunch, which is ultimately your initial goal, is to get into 
them through the right person. And so oftentimes I'll get an email, it might be from a you know ambitious 15 or 16 year old and say, Ryan, I'm a young entrepreneur, I'm looking for advice, and it might be a nine paragraph email. And no matter how much I authentically care, I will be getting 200 to 300 emails per day, and I can't respond more than a sentence, or sometimes even at all, to these long emails. And so if it doesn't come from someone who I already know and trust, who can vouch for the credibility, integrity, and work ethic of this individual, I often will simply not see the email or not have time to follow up on the email. And so it's up to you as someone seeking mentors to pursue the crap out of people, pursue the shit out of people until you get them to allow you to take them to lunch. And oftentimes the way we filter people besides trusted connections is by who's the most persistent, not who's the most annoying, but who tries over a series of weeks, over a series of months, to show, to demonstrate that they are serious. Because there are a lot of people in the world that talk a big game but do very little. And oftentimes, we want to spend our times as adults with people who are doing things and are serious about the things that they're doing. And perseverance and persistence highly correlates with seriousness. And so, if someone sends me an email, a text message, a FedEx, and a tweet, and comes to me through two of my trusted connections, I'm definitely going to go to lunch with them. But it might take a month or two for, unless you come through the right person. So pursue the people that you want and be very specific about the prospective mentors. I just mentioned a second ago, one of the tips that I've found is really effective at getting to important, busy people. One of the most important things I can say that not a lot of people do still, if you really want to get someone's attention, send them a FedEx package, not a simple letter, but maybe something a little bit bulky. As an entrepreneur, as someone who gets a lot of emails, I am overwhelmed with the number of messages I get. But important people like opening FedEx packages, and UPS packages, and DHL packages. It's a strange, unique way of enabling you to pay $10 to get the attention of some really impressive people. And so let's look at the number of messages a busy person, a really busy public figure, might receive on a monthly basis. Now these are just estimates, of course, but a busy person might get 300 emails a day, which in a month is 10,000. We might get 30 texts a day, which in a month is 1,000. And we might get three or four letters, sometimes many times more than that, every day via USPS. But I bet you we'll get less than one FedEx package every three days, a couple a week. And often we insist that those FedEx packages get opened by us, because it's often our loved ones that are sending us important things, or things that we've asked for, ordered online. And so if you really want to get to someone, send them a FedEx package, spend the $12 on them, and include something that adds a little bit of 3D nature to the package. Something that might be memorable, and put in there a note, a short, a brief note, about who you are, and why specifically you think that connecting would be valuable. And that's all you need to say. And if you have that person's email, follow it via email and just simply ask them for a time that you can get together. If you don't have their email, put yours in there. And often, probably one out of two, one out of three times, you'll get a reply back. Another sort of trick that you can get to people who are in the public eye with is by sending them at messages on Twitter. To this day, I'll get a couple hundred emails a day, but I'll only get five or six people who are at mentioning me on Twitter. And one of the things that is pretty clear about human nature is that we all have some form of ego. And people like to know when they're being mentioned, when, particularly when they're being mentioned in news sources or in social media. And so if you can include their at name in a message on Twitter and send them a message directly, they'll almost certainly see it, if not respond. And if you can get them to follow you on tw because of potentially being interested in the same topics, if they follow you on Twitter, and they happen to have a smartphone and you send an app message, oftentimes that message will go directly to a push notification on that person's smartphone. And what better way to get immediately uh, the attention of someone who you're trying to seek out to be a mentor. And so as I've said, most people give up after sending one or two emails because they, they fear being annoying. Now, what I find bothersome is when someone has a really good reason to get in touch with me because I can help them with something or maybe they can help me with something. 
but I might just miss an email. I'll miss 30, 40, maybe percent, 50, 30, 40, or maybe 50 percent of the emails that get sent to me. And so send another. Get in touch again if it really is important for you to, and pursue them nicely. Now, don't show up at their home, but if they have an office and they have a lobby, don't really concern yourself with showing up their office, showing up in their lobby, and see if you can simply wait for them to say hi for five minutes at the end of the day, or maybe on their walk to their car. And as long as you're a respectable person that's values driven and following the golden rule, and you're trying to do something that will interest the other person, they'll be quite interested in that. And very few people have actually tracked me down enough to walk with me on the 30 second or 60 second trip to my car after the office uh, each day. Find someone who can vouch for you digitally, explain your passion, and pursue them until you find them. Even if it takes six months, if that's what it takes, if this person is one of the 20 potential people in the world that can enable you to achieve your dreams, there's very little that should get in your way from being able to meet with them. Now, if you're not in the same geographic location, one of the tri tri uh, tricks or tips I've found to be very useful, once you get in touch with them, is to build a relationship via maybe a couple short emails or a FedEx message and say, I'm going to be in your area. I'm going to be in New York City. If the person's in New York, I'm going to be in New York City in next week. Could you meet? I'm going to be in New York City in two weeks. Could you meet? Now, you're not lying because if they say yes to the meeting, you will go and you'll be in New York City. But you don't necessarily have to have a flight booked already or a trip already planned. And so find your mentors that are going to be in New York, find your mentors that are in DC, find your potential mentors in San Francisco or Los Angeles or Chicago, in Atlanta, and then just simply make trips to those cities and line up two or three meetings. And oftentimes because of the scarcity of you only being in a city for a couple days, people who otherwise wouldn't take a meeting, if you live somewhere, strangely would take a meeting because, well, they're only there for two days, then I'll have lunch with them when they're here. But you actually have to go if they say yes, but that's wonderful. Once you get the meeting, don't talk their head off about things they're not interested in. Remember, you have to put yourself in their shoes. You have to know in advance what they are passionate about. Read their research. Figure out what they're passionate about and what they're interested in. Learn about their field. If you spend all this time uh, trying to get a meeting but no time researching and doing your diligence on the people you're going to meet, what's the point? Be super informed. Be in the top 5% of knowledgeable and having information of all the people that they've met in their life, regardless of your age, and that will build trust with them. If you can talk with someone about the things that they are passionate about, particularly if you're a young individual and you've been persistent in getting the meeting, they will absolutely love you and be happily, will be happy to informally mentor you. And then at the end, you don't want to ask them to formally mentor you because Busy people have too many commitments and too many obligations, and one of the things that good, value-driven, internally aligned people try to do is not take on too many commitments, because we believe in under-promising and over-delivering. However, there are a number of informal commitments that we can take on at any period of time. And so if I found someone who is passionate about the same thing I'm passionate about, let's say development economics or East Africa or using technology to make a difference in the world, and I found that they were smart and they had come to me from a, someone I knew well, and or were very uh, persistent in getting a meeting with me and they could talk about these things and I knew that they were learning and they could ask good questions. I would absolutely be willing to do a call with them every couple months or at least reply to the emails. And once you know someone, you're building a lifelong relationship. It's not about that month. It's not about that year. It's about how you can both help each other in the decades to come. And if you can just build around you a council or a mastermind of sorts of 10 amazing people from whom you can seek advice whenever you need advice on a particular topic, you'll be ahead of 99.5% of the world, if not more, in terms of your ability to execute and achieve your dreams. Now, once they say yes to this informal mentorship, follow up. Send brief questions when you have questions. Go to the same events. Go to the same networking events. Frequency and recency are the things that people remember. And so if you can be having, if you could have had an interaction recently, they'll remember you. If you can have repetitive interactions every month or two with an individual, they will definitely remember you. And uh, develop that relationship over time. Really invest in it. It's not a transactional relationship. It's not, here, I need this piece of information, so I'm going to spend three months getting a 20-minute meeting with you and then get that information and then you're done with them. 
No, this is a relationship that can help you for decades to come. And ideally, as you grow older and you become more influential in your field, enable you to help that person in their own goals and dreams. At the end of the day, one of the goals of almost every successful person who is later in life is to ensure that their legacy continues, is to ensure that they can share the information and knowledge that they've gained over the years with other people, whether that be in a video setting like this, or whether that be one-on-one -on -one with amazing people. And so if you can be one of those persons who someone takes one-on-one -on -one time with and you can learn from and then eventually help them, all the better. And so the key to achieving your dreams, once you know what your dreams are, is to surround yourself with the right people and mentors and invest in your education and find work filled with passion. I'll work 80 hours a week, but the reality is I don't work a single hour because I love what I do and I do what I love and all I do is I play. I just do what I enjoy doing where I can get into a slow state as uh, Csikszentmihalyi says. So find someone with high integrity, with passion, with the same passion of you under which you can learn and you will achieve great things. Do these things and you'll be on track to achieve even your most ambitious goals and whole new possibilities will open up. Get into these networks that I talked about during the last section, last video on networking. Live this purpose-driven life, which is a life lived within the framework of achieving goals which you plan and think about in advance. Surround yourself with these amazing, smart, caring, high integrity people and you'll be on your way to becoming a Jedi. Now Jedi, of course, is a, is a term from George Lucas. It's a term from Star Wars. And someone who is training to be a Jedi is called a Padawan. Is someone who is on a conscious journey to become a Jedi. Now Padawan is actually Sanskrit and it means learner. And to me, a Padawan is just a young, ambitious, driven, smart, highly competent, caring, high integrity person that is on the path toward making a difference in the world. And regardless of where I go in life in the future, or if I live one more or two more days, for the rest of my life I will always make time for people who are high integrity, highly driven, persistent, and are working toward making a big difference in the world, whose goals align with my goals. Because that enables me to leverage and scale my time and my impact beyond my own lifetime. So I've taken a, uh, in jest, an opportunity to define what Jedi means to me. So a Jedi to me is a highly competent, super connected, and deeply compassionate soul and systems thinker working at the highest levels of societal structuring whose passion has been fully unleashed toward achieving an identified, deeply meaningful mission that awakens them with extraordinary focus and immense energy daily. That is a Jedi. I am by no means a Jedi. I am only a Padawan seeking to learn from many Jedis. So if you were to create a checklist from this definition, you would say highly competent, super connected, Deeply, deeply compassionate. Someone who is a systems thinker. I'll talk tomorrow during the section on the world about internal and external systems, about ecological systems, human systems, and internal, uh, oftentimes, um, an anatomical systems. Someone who is working to improve the world. If you're working to destroy the world, you're on the dark side. You're not a Jedi, regardless of how competent and connected you are. Someone who has identified their mission and purpose. The best, most ambitious people in the world, all of them, have identified why they exist. Their raison d'etre, their purpose of life, their reason for living. And they've identified it and often written it down. And they've unleashed this passion and all of their energies and much of their time on achieving this defined, succinct, clear, motivating mission. They have extraordinary focus. Now remember, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. These are people that have aligned their abilities to kicking butt, taking names, and making a difference for good. And so the last part, of course, is they have to have immense, vibrant energy. At the end of the day, if you're monotonous, if you're monotone, if your energy is low, you cannot inspire others, you cannot lead others, and at the end of the day, you must become greater than yourself. You must pass on your mission to others who are smart, caring, and competent in order to leverage your time and ability beyond yourself. So you must have immense vibrant energy. 
In physics, energy can neither be destroyed nor created. It can only change form. And so the job of a Jedi is to take their identified meaningful mission and to take their energy and to transform it into energy passed on to others. Now, of course, in Star Wars and all six of the movies, there's this concept of a Jedi Knight. And the Jedi Knights were the protectors of the universe and of good. And so, continuing along with this playful metaphor, I define a Jedi Knight as a group, as a group of Jedis who are consciously choosing to be the guardians of peace and justice and who utilize the forces of energy and influence, both seen energy and unseen energy, and their influence for good while changing the future for the better through their efforts. That is a group of Jedi Knights. And as you continue to explore the world, build your networks, clarify your goals, find amazing Jedi mentors, you will realize there are many groups of Jedi Knights out there working to make the world a better place. And someday, you may be able to join them. So now you know the importance and meaning of finding yourself a Jedi Master Mentor. Don't accept any mentor. Don't accept a person you just run into, unless they're truly great. Find a true sensei. Find someone from whom you can learn amazing things and do great things. So young Padawan, who is your Jedi Master? That is the question you should be asking yourself. Why don't you have one yet? One year from now, even six months from now, you can. But first, you must know what you wish to achieve and pursue it with diligence. Thank you for watching this section on mentorship.